morning in elementary school, the class would stand, raise our left hands, and place our right over our hearts and recite the Pledge of Allegiance together. And the other part says, One nation under God, indivisible. I always thought it was invisible. And that seemed really cool because it was like superpowers or something. One nation under God, invisible. I want bed sheets with Thomas Jefferson and George Washington's faces stitched across them so my forefathers might hold me when I am tired. One nation under God, invisible. I want my coffin to be painted red, white, and blue so in death I may finally be cradled in freedom. One nation under God, invisible. I want the secrets of this country to stop being secrets and to start being the mistakes we've learned from. One nation under God, invisible. I want my country to be what it once was to me and a generation of first graders who misheard a word. Mistaking it for a nation that could leap over buildings in a single bound. A nation that possessed a green ring that manifested the imagination into reality. A nation who was a simple God who stood went out into the night to stop crooks using only his gut, his mind, and his heart. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I used to hear that every morning. Every morning, we had liberty and we had justice to give to all. For the 1,680 school days of my childhood, I pledged my allegiance during the best years of my life, placing my shaking hands over my quaking heart, hoping it didn't beat its way out of my chest. In the excitement I felt thinking about recess and chocolate milk on Fridays and no homework on the weekends and being a finger on a hand of fingers on a hand of arms of a body of people that had liberty and justice with every person's hearts were beating just as rapidly as the children saying up in Ms. Brown's fourth grade classroom. In an innocence of kickball and cooties, I pledged my allegiance, and I still pledge my allegiance to an innocence of kickball and cooties, four square and pigtails and garbage pale kids, and knowing that where I lived was just that. One nation under God, invisible in its lines and fences, instead of one nation invisible in its presence. I know this nation is that country beating inside the chest of an excited little boy, trying to be patient and learn about the world, but he's too afraid to lift his palm and let his blood sing. Because he's afraid that being alive means dying. Because he's afraid to let the very pulsating muscle that is no bigger than his fist, but so much more, lead him through life. When I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe for the first time, my mind burned, and I was alive. When I saw E.T. for the first time, my mind burned, and I was alive. When I danced to Baloo, seeing the bare necessities on vinyl record, running around and around all the way, how my mind was engulfed in flames. When I was six years old, I had all the answers to all the questions I wasn't asking. And no need for the ones, the ones I was. When my mind burned and I was alive, I made many pledges to a flap of dyed fabric holding forgotten colonies and faded stars that hung limply at the front of the classroom. And I just want a breeze to blow through an open window and lift it on up. And start making good on those promises. Thank you.